a C in English and a C minus in Spanish. Well, that's not normal for you. If you say so. How's your mom holding up? You can tell that Max is already really anxious. She is fidgeting with her hands. She's fidgeting with her foot. First thing that I would start with probably wouldn't be a question that might put her on the defense. So I wouldn't ask her at first about grades that are doing poorly or a question about her mom because those are questions that are really deep and really painful and can make a lot of people feel more defensive like we're being judged. You would want to start with things of just how things are going and see how comfortable the other person is about being able to share. I believe that in therapy we should let the client be able to run the pace of how deep or non-deep they want to go because sometimes we're just not feeling it and if it's a really negative experience when you go to therapy the chances are you're not going to want to go back. How's your mom holding up? She's fine. I mean, so you can hear by the upswing in Max's voice when she says that her mom is fine, that she actually isn't. It's kind of like she's fine, but it's a question. Instead of saying she's fine, which would be definitive, it's she's fine. That means like kind of fine, but kind of isn't. She hates our new place. Is she still drinking? Yeah, a little, but well, she's working two jobs, so it's not easy. It must not be easy for you either. Max knows what her mom has gone through and so for her she doesn't want her mom to be judged and a lot of children want to defend their parents even if they've done really horrible things because this is our protector and for Max she understands that her mom has having a really hard time being able to work so hard and also having lost her son. She's probably also embarrassed having to go through this and share that with someone else. Plus Max is more of that avoidant personality type so she doesn't want this counselor to pity her or feel sorry for her because that would hurt worse than going through what she's going through right now. With your stepdad gone? It's kind of better. He was an asshole, so there's less assholery. I like how Max is really though blunt and honest about her feelings about her stepdad and that things are better without him. And that you can tell is really direct because she's definitive in the answers, but also she's able to share a certain amount of emotions that come with it. And often when we're being defensive, we take those emotions out and we kind of stay being analytical. That's easier because if we start to feel emotions, then they might become overwhelming and we can't keep those defense mechanisms in place. Are you sleeping better? Yeah, fine. So no more headaches? Nightmares? And you can also tell that she doesn't want to share her nightmares and how she's feeling with that she, because she doesn't add anything to it. She wants it to go on to the next question. You can tell that Max in this situation is not really wanting to be here. She didn't come on her own accord. She was asked to. And that's a really different situation. The reason that I'm a therapist in private practice is that I don't want to feel like I'm forcing people to come to see me. But in a school setting, your job is to make sure that you intervene even when someone may not want to because you want to be able to help as much as possible. And with people being more forced or coerced to have to go into therapy, you want to make sure that that space is going to leave a really positive taste in someone's mouth because they may not be receptive or they may not have had a really good day and that ability to have to share, they may not be able to right now because they're tired and exhausted and hurt and vulnerable and you never really know. High school is very difficult for many people. Nightmares. Nope. And the one thing that's interesting about this scene is that usually when we look and we think about things that are in our past, our eyes end up looking up and going to a side. That's what often happens when our brain is processing thoughts. And in this case, they didn't show that. She just looked directly at the counselor and said no. So maybe we're getting a flashback that in this case, she didn't actually go through. We know that Max is still going through all kinds of trauma, going through that very painful experience but she can't share it no one's gonna believe her and no one's gonna understand and so it leaves her in this case of one being avoidant not wanting people to pity her not wanting people to feel bad and also that she might not even be believed and so she's stuck in this place that even if she wanted to share these feelings she really 
can't. So for a lot of people, when they go through trauma and they keep it inside of them, it ends up coming out as aggression or it ends up coming out as anxiety. And other people, they may end up eating more, eating less or not sleeping or going through nightmares or headaches. For many people, when they can't express themselves, it also may come out into other maladaptive ways, such as an illness or self-harm. You also may just withdraw from the people that you used to feel loved and cared and safe with because you can't really express it. And for some people, they just feel so angry at the world that they can't even cope. And so because of that, they just withdraw more within themselves. Max, what you've been through, what you're still going through, it's a lot for anyone. And you see that look? She doesn't want to hear these words. They don't actually help her. They're like placating words because in her mind, one, she's heard them so many times and two, she feels like no one else can really understand what she has gone through. And that is true. The therapist is trying to reach out and say, I get that this is really horrible and no one else can really understand it. But for Max, she's kind of like, stop. I don't want to hear this again. It doesn't actually help me. You're doing it more for yourself. Not that the therapist is, but that's what Max seems to be saying with her micro expressions. And it's okay to not be okay, but I can only help you if you're truthful. But I love the therapist saying, it's okay not to be okay. And I think that a lot of people need that permission. I think that I would have held back on the, I can't help you unless you're truthful, because right away that again, she's being told that she's lying to her. And sometimes it's not even lying. They just can't share right now because it's overwhelming and too much. So that makes her feel a little bit more defensive and there's even less of a chance that she's going to come back next time, even if she needs to be able to talk to someone. If you open up to me. Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm being open. I'm being open. And we ended up being in this power dynamic. Then Max has no choice because she feels like she's placed in that corner and she has to defend herself again. But that decreases the chance that they're going to be able to have an open set of communication. It's a fair thing. If you're not ready to share with me, then don't. And when you are ready, I'm here to be able to listen. Even if it's something that you have to say, you know what, I didn't share this with you before. It's so hard to be able to unfurl your entire life and all of your dark spots to someone else. I think that it's only respectful to be able to allow someone to do that in the manner in which they can. Can. And sometimes that means that they may place something in that placeholder that isn't as accurate and then change that later. Guys, hey. Are you stalking me or something? Oh, no, I, I just want to give you this. What is this? A ticket to the game. After you've lost someone that you cared about, even though her brother was in a lot of cases someone she didn't like, she still loved him. But when you deal with that kind of loss, often you push everyone away because you don't want to emotionally get close to someone else that you could lose all over again. And especially for people that aren't great with being able to manage their own emotions. Because they're not skilled at that, that pain isn't properly dealt with and they just simmer in it and it just hurts because they don't have the tools to be able to heal on their own. There are many other cool stranger things out there, but living with anxiety isn't one of them. If you want to take a look at in-depth ways to manage it, check out my brand new Nebula class on beating anxiety. It covers what anxiety is and straightforward tools and techniques on how to cope with it so you can start living a better life today. There are also brand new Nebula classes from Thomas Frank on Business 101, Legal Eagle on How to Sue Like a Lawyer, Sam from Wendover on Persuasive Communication, as well as classes with music, writing, animation, travel, and many more, with new classes going up every week. They're all masterfully produced and available for just $10 a month or $100 a year, and that includes thousands of ad-free, sponsor-free videos already on Nebula, and new videos are coming out every day from me and all your other favorite education creators, including original exclusives and extended and bonus features that are only available on Nebula, like my two-hour Jinx saga from Arcane. And for those of you that have already signed up for Nebula, including CuriosityStream, it's only $5 a month or $50 a year to upgrade to classes. So just hit the button on the screen or the link in the description and start learning today. Hitting that link really does help out my channel and so does watching this playlist where I break down the characters and scenes from Vox Machina, Arcane, Stranger Things, and 
many more. So give it a watch and I'll see you in the next video. So hopefully you like this video with a little bit of a snippet on Max and what she's going through at this point. And if you like this video, please hit subscribe.